Translation Neither he who considers the previously stated Dehi self to be the killer, that is, the doer of the act of killing, nor he who takes this, the Dehi self, to be the killed, that is, the object of killing, because the body Deha has been killed, knows the truth. Due to their ignorance, neither knows the self, which is the foundation of the concept of I, meaning neither of them knows the real nature of the self, as they think of the self as the slayer or the slain when the body is slain. As the self is changeless without any action, it is neither the agent nor the victim of killing. 2.19.4 Explanation The word anam is used to indicate something that has been spoken of previously. Here, the self, which is described in the previous sloka as eternal, imperishable and incomprehensible. We saw in Para 2.13.4 how Dehi, the embodied self, is quite different from Deha, the body. And in Para 2.18.6, how the latter is just a superimposition on the self. That being the case, it is pointless to think you are the doer of an action or its object. When a person is killed, only his Deha is destroyed, not the self. The self is neither the agent of killing nor the victim. The slayer and the slain think otherwise 
because neither of them knows that the self is unchangeable and cannot be destroyed. They mistake the deha for the dehi. The wise are not deluded like that. 2.19.5 This sloka is an adaptation of mantra 2.19 of Katha Upanishad. Handa chen manyade hantum hadas chen manyade hadam upautauna vijani to nayam hantina hanyade Though the slain thinks he is slain, and the slayer thinks he slays, neither knows that this self neither slays nor is slain. 2.19.6 Bhashya Kadham avikriyaha atma iti dityo mantraha Translation How does the atma become changeless? To this the second mantra of the Upanishads. 